Hi, Taz Vogel, uh, sitting in front of the new addition to the Trident family, the Trident 88 console, a split inline console uh, which builds on the heritage of the Sonic Quality, uh, the Trident EQ, as well as the Quality Build. This latest incarnation it takes advantage of all the new technology, the new integrated circuits that are available, um, the manufacturing processes where we use a combination of through-hole and surface mount parts, and uh, the modular construction which makes this a highly serviceable, um, high quality unit. Here we are with the Trident 88 input module. So starting at the top here, we have the assignment switches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and sub, uh, the remix or mix bus. Uh, they, these are the assignments to the subgroups in the mix bus and follow the channel pan pod. Going down, we have the preamp stage. You've got a mic and separate line level control. And looking at the top here, we have the mic insert switch. This mic insert switch, when depressed, actually... Uh, inserts a signal um, which is connected to a quarter inch jack on the uh, connector panel uh, which can come from uh, a, a mic preamp or a line source so it allows you to bring uh, a, an external signal that totally bypasses the the uh, console preamp stage so in, in doing so you could use your own favorite mic pre or um, uh, device uh, uh, a line input device that you want to put into the channel and that totally bypasses a mic preamp stage here in saying that the mic preamp is a high quality uh, preamp a class a discrete preamp which has very low noise very low distortion and high bandwidth um, so it sonically it's very very clear and good going down we have the line uh, switch between the line and the mic. I forgot to mention the phantom for the mic preamp. And the polarity switch, which just changes the phase, uh, the polarity of the signal coming down the channel. Now, next, uh, on the left here, we have the input reverse switch. What this does, when depressed, it actually switches the line input quarter inch jack on the back and the monitor input quarter inch jack on the back so you could actually insert or not insert but have the monitor signal actually come through the channel pass so you can use all the facilities that the channel uh, has next door to that we have the switch uh, the meter switching so for the bar graph up there, you can monitor either the direct output or the monitor return, or uh, uh, when I say monitor return, anything that's coming back into the console for monitoring purposes. Now, you'll notice direct output. Now, internally on the input module, this direct output source can either be uh, post fader, which is by default, or it can be the insert return signal. Now, the good thing about, or the advantage of doing that is you can have something going to tape on the direct output or your recording device. Uh, so your direct output can go to tape with an effect on it because it's on the insert return. And whether or not you've got that insert on or off, you could have an unaffected um, signal coming through the channel path just gives you a little bit more flex flexibility. Coming down, we have the Trident EQ. Now, Trident EQ is a four-band EQ. High, high mid, low, low mid, and low, sorry. Now, the low and the high 
uh, oh, sorry, this, tri this EQ actually follows the Trident ADC EQ, where the high and the low is uh, shelving and the mids are peaking. Coming to the top of the EQ panel here, you have the insert on off. What that does is uh, in, uh, it uh, puts the return signal uh, into the channel path. Going down, we have this uh, switch labeled pre-EQ insert. Uh, basically, what this does is switches the EQ pre and or post the insert. Further down, we have the high pass filter. High pass filter is uh, centered around 50 hertz. Uh, the slope on this is sharp. It's actually 18 dBs per octave. Uh, the, 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 hence the, the uh, lower frequency. And finally, we have the EQ on off. Now we come to the auxiliary section of the module, input module. Um, there are four mono auxiliary sends. Uh, all auxiliary sends can be selected pre or post the fader and auxiliary 1 and 2 can also be assigned to the monitor path. 3 and 4 again mono auxiliary sends switchable pre post fader. Coming down further we have aux 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now, if you notice, uh, there's a, a level and a separate balance control or pan control for the stereo auxes. Aux 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 can be selected pre or post uh, the channel fader. And uh, aux 7 and 8 can be assigned to the monitor path. Further down, we have the monitor section. The monitor section has a level control, a pan control to the mix bus, and a tilt EQ. Tilt EQ uh, is derived from the Tone Lux series, and basically you have a one knob control that affects the uh, the bass, or oh, sorry, the low and the high frequency. Um, next to the uh, well, in this section, we have this EQ to monitor. When pressing that down, actually switches the channel EQ, which is up there, to the monitor path. So now the monitor path is actually fed to the channel EQ, and the line path then takes this tilt EQ. So basically, we're switching the EQ from monitor to input. Further down we have the monitor AFL so you can uh, solo up the uh, uh, the monitor path and we have the monitor mute. Down here we have the the bottom of the module which is the channel pan pot, signal indication showing when you have signal and when your signal is uh, uh, getting high uh, so we, we have that and then we have the solo so you can send your channel signal to the solo system but notice we also have this AFL PFL so basically you can select what you're sending to the solo uh, typically uh, AFL is following the pan pot and PFL is a mono signal and at the bottom here we have the channel mute further down we have the channel fader which is a high quality um, 100 millimeter pot now this these you notice that the uh, faders are on single uh, metal panels. Uh, this can be retrofitted with a automation system that uh, can either be installed uh, when ordered 
or very easily in the field.